Ah, collaboration and collaborative tools and technologies. You know, in the 1980s, Seymour Papert gave us mind storms and 10 years later, constructionism. And people start talking about collaboration with technology. And then books start coming out like network-based classrooms and computer-supported collaborative learning and LabNet to get students and instructors, teachers in K-12 schools to talk about their science and math kinds of uh, projects, right? And I even had a book called Electronic Collaborators back in 1998, which got at uh, literacy, apprenticeship, and discourse. Just how can we use the early web technologies for online collaboration among students and among instructors? This started exploding. But it's not until we get to the 21st century with the Web 2.0 that we really see this humongous possibility of online collaboration, of seeing someone's points of view. And so that's what we're going to talk about here today in this program. We're going to look at technologies that can get us to see multiple perspectives, engage in teamwork, socially interact, engage. I mean, it's really seeing someone else's point of view that we should be focusing in on when we talk about using technologies for collaboration, whether it's Google Documents, Ning, Wikis, Yahoo Groups, you name it. We got technologies for web conferencing like VIEW and DIMDIM Dim to do, you know, free conferencing up to 20 people on the web. We've got Kalenos for project management and document sharing if you don't want to use SharePoint for Microsoft. You got Concept Share for people interested in sharing design products and concepts with one another via the web or video and to give feedback on those products. We got online whiteboards or collaborative writing and editing software like Writeboard. We've got Twidla for online whiteboards as well and Drip Tweet if you want to have your uh, tweets, your Twitter accounts be private or among your students and communicate as small teams that are not public in nature like Twitter can tend to be. Facebook, of course, is used by hundreds of millions of people around the world but how do we use it in classes? How do we use it in universities, in schools, in departments? Some use it as fan pages, right? We have technical reports from places like Mission to Learn, which describe how to use collaborative technologies and the collaborative tools out there. Mashable does something similar with their list of 60 plus online collaborative tools and resources. So find those technical reports, find those tools, but think about the activities. Is it a design activity? A resource review activity? Is it a writing project, a field experience, or a case? How will you structure your groups then for online interaction? How will you pair and team them up? The deadlines you create, the uh, feedbacks you embed within your course for your students to know if they're on task or not, the objectives and skills that you want to enhance through the use of collaborative technologies should be spelled out in your course syllabi and agenda. Once you've done that, you might find ways like Tulane University's Freeman School of Business has done to do online role play, online debates, online activities of some kind. Have students take on roles, whether they're uh, power traders and brokers and dispatchers. You might also rethink your classroom spaces for online interactions among your students. Many schools, universities, and corporate settings are doing that today, rethinking who the instructor is and becoming more of a facilitator within those learning spaces, those collaborative spaces that are in face-to-face -face environments. Ask yourself questions. How do I want this interaction to take place? Who do I want students interacting with? How will we share the products in and amongst each other or make them public? When will we share what we've done? And then look at the technologies that are out there and brainstorm maybe some ideas that you could be doing using a wiki like Wikispaces, PBWorks, or WebPaint. Once you've brainstormed with your students, maybe you have them do products within a tool like Google Documents and Spreadsheets. Maybe you have them go to the internet and use Digo to tag and flag resources that they've found on the internet. So brainstorming in a wiki, and then taking those divergent ideas and making them convergent in nature. Maybe using Google Documents to report on what they found. Maybe having them flag ideas on the web, highlight, tag, use sticky notes like in Daigo for social bookmarking or share their bookmarks in Delicious. 
Perhaps you'll have them go to Yahoo Groups or Ning or Google Groups to form a group that convenes, that shares a calendar, shares documents, has discussions, and so forth uh, for their team, or maybe for the whole class. Or maybe have them create their own groups or join the groups that they want to join and reflect on those online group activities. Maybe it's an apprenticeship process where they watch from the outside, having a Ning group of a particular type that they've joined, Ning in Education, for instance, or a Yahoo group. If maybe you're in a history class, join this particular Yahoo group for history, or a Google group for accounting or computer programming. You name it, there are groups out there your students can join. And then use these te collaborative technologies for maybe cross-cultural projects, maybe research projects, Skype, putting on a little headset in Skype. And then letting your students, you know, Skype with one another and discuss their ideas, right? Using their Skype accounts. That might be one way to do things, right? So you've got your students doing free online phone calls and chats. But my advice is to start small. And then you can expand on things later on. You might go with local groups within your class and move to global later. But before you do that, test. Before you do anything, test those technologies. Create the job aids or orientation sessions so students don't feel frustrated with what you're attempting to do. And offer, continue to offer advice and change that advice every semester to make it better. Think about pairing your students. Co collaboration by program area, year in the program, interest areas. Maybe even have them create a logo or identity for one another, a team name for community building. And then once you've been doing this for a number of years, share with your colleagues what you're doing so you can help them out as well as gain ideas from them and what they're doing within their respective classes. Create a list of what you see happening within your class, what, what worked, what maybe didn't work so well. And once you've done that, then maybe talk to your students and see what their perspectives are and look for the gaps between what you think worked and what they think worked, right? Look for the mismatches and then create a checklist maybe of technologies that you could consider in the future. Maybe have them create such a checklist for you. When your groups are working with one another, you often will get some tension because of due dates, grading, time, whatever. Monitor that. Give feedback where you see it needed within the small groups. Ask them formatively how things are going. Ask them about grading and how they expect to be assessed, but also Think about your own grading patterns within your class. Do you use pure grading, self-grading, uh, dimensional scoring? Do you use expert feedback? How will you grade? Maybe it's grading drafts of work, multiple drafts, right? Maybe it's doing a combination of things within your class, but explain that to your students. Also think about how easy the technologies are to use. Give up on functionality. Go with ease of use. Believe me, that will save you a lot of stress. Again, look at the diverse nature of your class, maybe getting students who might come from different parts of the world to collaborate with one another to share perspectives. Maybe assign them different resources that they're in charge of, that they share with one another, so they gain an expertise. And when they gain an expertise, then they, in turn, might uh, feel more committed to the project. When you're all done, reflect on what you've done within that project, what's happened within your classroom setting. So there are many factors to consider. You know, you can read the books, whether it's Mindstorms or something else. You can look at the resources that are out there and brainstorm with your students the possibilities. You can look at what other people have done for their activities online for collaboration with debates or role play or research meetings in Skype or joining Google Groups and documents or brainstorming in a wiki, whatever it is. Reflect on what's happened. Share that with your students. You'll become a better practitioner in using collaborative technologies because it will not decrease anytime soon. Collaboration is only going to explode during the coming decades. It already has with the Web 2.0, podcast wikis, and blogs. So believe me, take a, take a chance. Jump in. Do one thing. You won't be disappointed. So good luck to everybody. It might be time for you to collaborate Think about what we've said here at Indiana University Instructional Consulting Office coming to you today. Collaborative tool uses applications. Think about them. Good luck.